Hey, this is Alex Stafford from the Rave TV, and today we are sitting down with Richard Patrick from Filter. How you doing? I am doing very well, thank you. Very well. Welcome to the Rave. Welcome to the Rave TV. I think this place is awesome, and I think your TV show is awesome. Yeah? Yes. It's pretty cool. Big I think we should, get a, we should get a whole like TV channel. I think you should. Yeah? I think someone, someone should pick it up. Have you, have you, have you, is there any way like Netflix could offer it? Like, I know, I know like. I don't know, but that'd be awesome. I know like Roku has these like apps that like are, you can make an app and, and like there's like this thing called Amp TV and it's literally some guy in his basement like for his own band. And like you can buy all this stuff on Roku TV. It's like free. Really? Yeah. So you could, you could get like Roku or Apple TV or any of those. Start an app and then have all your interviews just rolling, like uh, JBTV does it in Chicago. And uh, I don't think they update it enough, but uh, there's always that, man. There's always a new way to push the show and push yeah. the shows here, you know, so maybe. Maybe yeah. by next time you come around. It's a famous jurnt. <laughs> Apparently, you've had some really great performers here. Oh, we have had plenty of great performers here. All right. You've played here a few times before uh, with um, Bush and Chevelle most recently. Yeah, and I think a, a, a few times back in the 90s. I yeah. remember we played here. We actually, we actually have a, uh, um, on our, day, our, our website, we can search for past shows. And I think the earliest you guys played here was in the 2000s. I don't think it was in the 90s. Like, right. May, maybe. Maybe our database is off Well, 2000s bit, is, yeah, that was a crazy time. Yeah? Yeah. So. Well, I don't remember uh, a lot, but I remember going, Dahmer. You remember it being a good time, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember going, Dahmer. This is Dahmer's neck of the woods out here. Yeah, a few, few blocks over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then I was like, this is creepy. Let's do it. And uh, I remember there's a pool um, over here. And Actually, it's, it's down there. Oh, it's yeah. a pool. <laughs> uh, and uh, the guys from Bush set up drums down there and just recorded some drum patterns from down there. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of spooky. He got down a little there, tiny set and he was playing like, <laughs> you know, it sounds amazingly the reverb. It's it, it's what we call a live room, in the industry. Well, maybe next time record a song down there for yourself. Yeah, I think it'd be very acoustic. We'll check it out though. But you are on tour right now with uh, American Head Charge, mm -hmm. Comedy Christ, and Cold Chamber. Mm -hmm. How's the tour going? That's it's quite, awesome. It's quite the bill. Yeah, it's a great tour. The, the audience has been a, an amazing. They've been, they've been amazing, and you know the response is awesome for everybody. So it's been you know it's been a little great romp through the country. Absolutely. So now you also just announced recently on your website that you guys are working on your seventh album. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about? It? You got a name, a date when we might be able to hear some new music? Well, the first thing that I've I, I mean I went back <clears throat> kind of for the fans, and I went back and I I I. I visited Gino, Brian Lee Skang, Ben Gross, kind of some of the guys I worked with on the first three records, the Warner Brothers records. And I, I wrote a few songs with them, with Johnny, you know, and um, focused on the kind of straight up traditional sound of filter. And I started getting to a point where I was like, am I just reliving something am i just writing the same song over and over again so completely by coincidence i i met this kid named umi capella who's our current guitar player um and umi and i got together and he's from australia and he's about you know he's like 29 30 and um we wrote a couple of songs and it was just i i kind of led it to this place of like look i love deep rich heavy guitars i love mm -hmm. that um but at the same time it's been done to death by by bands that i don't even like you know what i mean yeah. so i feel like it's almost become this their sound and so i've kind of been stumbling upon something that i think is very original and i think it's kind of a new genre and i'm calling it new industrial new industrial yeah are you going to do it like the nu with the unlot like new metal or just I, 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 I flunked grammar. So. <laughs> no, I did. I did. I, I mean, you know, whatever, whatever they do with it, you know, yeah. um, I'm not, I don't think like I'm going to trademark it or something. I don't think it's my job to do that, but 
I feel like it's like a whole new thing, and I and I hope some other bands follow along with us. And I think that's even a good uh, idea for an album title. Yeah. New Industrial? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Is that what you call that thing, an umla? Yeah, it's like, you know, when you see like Motley Crue or Motorhead, and it's the, the two dots over a right. vowel. It's like the umlaut. Umlaut? Yeah. I, I don't even know how to spell umlaut. umlaut. I think it's like a U, maybe? U umlaut. <laughs> yeah. When this when this video hits the internet, all the all the people are just gonna be like correcting what are all, you the, all the comments. <laughs> yeah, let them correct it. Let them build it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I love the fans. I want them to have you know as much control over this band as, as they possibly do. <laughs> I, I I just don't like some of the negative comments. Cut straight to my heart. It just it I'm right, right here. A little sad. Just kidding. You'll be okay. I'll be okay. You'll There's be okay. more than one fucking actor in my fucking house, okay? <laughs> my brother Rob is not the only actor in this house, all right? You know, I actually found out who your brother was yeah. just moments before coming on here. I mean, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, He, uh, him and I were like, let's, he's like, I'm going to go make movies. And my dad had a nervous breakdown. And then. And you're like, I'm going to go make some rock and I'm roll. I'm going to make rock and roll music. And I met this guy, Trent, and we're going to go across the country together, you know? <laughs> and. You know, lo and behold, here we are 25 years later. He's He's been making movies since he was, thir like, you know, like, gosh, I mean, it's, it's more than 30 or, f like, 35 years now. Yeah. So it's it's really, it's been an incredible thing. And, you know, our, our parents are, were so proud, and my mother very proud. My dad passed away. He, he, he passed away very proud of us and everything. So that's kind of, like, one of the things, like, you know, like, the song Take a Picture, there's that reference, like, hey, Dad, what do you think of your son now? And it's kind of... You always want your your parents to be proud. That's your best audience. Your best audience yeah. is your parents. Well, yeah. They don't like the heavy, and the, they, they're like, there's too much profanity, Rich. <laughs> you need to watch your language. Richard, there's too much profanity. You don't need to <laughs> say that. That's my mother, by the way. Oh, yeah? That's a perfect Nadine Patrick. <laughs> yes. Did your parents, like push for like oh you need a backup plan if the acting and the music doesn't work out you need something to fall back on were they um were they like that honestly with the adhd and the crazy in my life and the alcoholism yeah. i think i i kind of skipped some some of the background <laughs> the back uh the backup planning which of course you know you're always afraid of but at the same time you know there was a battle in uh the civil war and uh the captain, this captain of the Navy was like, look, we're going to get off the boat. We're going to run inside and we're going to do this raid. And then we're going to, we're going to get off the island and we'll be fine. And the, and the, and the, the crew's like, well, we're Navy. We're not going to go out there and fight on land. We're not infantry. Yeah. And he goes, no, we got to do this. It's important. Let's go do this. And, um, he ended up, he, he thought the men were going to be too comfortable with the idea that they could return to the, to the ship and just get out of there. So he got off and burnt the ship and then. And then they went and did the raid, and they got picked up. And it, like it was like do or die. Yeah. So for me, I've always respected the do or die kind of mentality. I never give up. Um, I always, always music is massively important to me. I'm creative in other ways. Um, I've I've written like you know I've got like the beginnings to a pretty cool TV show or or movie. You know, there's other there's so many different things out there that you can do in Hollywood. And um, you know, I work with uh, directors and and uh, uh, you know, music supervisors all the time. I've got an extensive past with um, songs for movies, and movie soundtracks, stuff like that. So there's all kinds of ways to, to, to keep um, paying for the stolen goods on the Internet. <coughs> <coughs> you. <coughs> you. Well, when the new album is out, hopefully a lot of people will come and pick it up. I think so. I mean, you know, the, the new record is, you know, I, I don't think, I think that's too on the nose. New industrial is too, might be too on the nose, but I am inventing a brand new kind of, of, of music and I'm very proud of it. And it's, it's really, it's based on, um, it's just based on all the right things. It's like, I'm not going to, I can't continually go off and write the same thing. I've never been that guy. You know, when I handed and take a picture to the record company, they were like, this is too light. Like, you're, you're forgetting who you are. And I'm like, I am everything, man. I grew up with Neil Diamond Records to, you know, to, to Kiss, to Pantera, to the, the Clash. And the Clash is actually the model of the band. You know, the Clash was doing, you know, hip-hop. They were doing 
uh, some reggae style reggae, rock, punk, yeah. you know, ska. They were doing all kinds of stuff, and they didn't limit themselves. And I think that that's kind of where Filter is. And I've, I've, I mean, the last record, this record, you know, the sun comes out tonight. There's that beautiful blend of like, okay, you're pissed, and then at a certain point, the song surprise, which is, I, I, it's one of my favorite videos of all time. It's about what happens to my wife when I leave. You know, um, you know, she's a single mom when I leave. You know, I, I go off on tour for half a year, and she's, you know, she's stuck with raising the kids all by herself, and it's very difficult on her. And I think it, it, it opens up to a bigger plane of, like, what about those, those women that have, like, junkies for husbands or, or yeah. deadbeats for husbands? And, um, uh, you know, so I wrote that song from a place of, 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 of heart, of authenticity, and, I, you know, I'm not going to be told by a record company, stick to your metal, stick to your metal. And I, I pissed a lot of people off when I did that with Take a Picture. And it's like, I've already set the parameters up for what this band will do, what we'll accomplish. And I'm never going to change from that. I'm always going to, our music is about authenticity and real life experience. And I've lived and I've hurt and I've been happy and I've been everything. And I think that, uh, you know, this record and the new record is going to be, uh, an extension of that the new record even more so yeah so and i mean take your pic take a picture that song was huge yeah and so i mean obviously you're doing something right someone says no and you put that out yeah and i mean that video was all over mtv well, I, as well I, and i mean you know this is when i was drinking i actually threatened a guy's life if i said i i, I had take a picture as uh, uh, it was a verse and a chorus, and then there was no verse. It was a rough demo. I knew what it was going to be, yeah. so I didn't continue to work on it until I could write the rest of the record. I was like, a good start, great. So I send it in, and the guy's like, this sucks. And I'm like, how about, a, how about you suck, motherfucker, and I'm going to kick your fucking ass, and I'll come out there and kill you and your fam. This is when I was a friggin' alcoholic, and him, him and I have <laughs> since... Ben, totally cool. He's actually a really sweetheart. He's like one of my best friends now. But you know, like, I was a nut back then. But I had There's a, a lot few of times faith. we start swinging. You I know, I had a lot of faith in the song, and so like I, I was literally, and it got as heavy as hell. The re the record company like met my manager and goes, "We spent a ton of money on this, and you give us the song. Are you sure this is going to be it?" And we we were like, "We're positive." And of course. The radio guy, Steve Tipp, looked at, or actually another guy, that wasn't Steve Tipp, it was another guy. He looked at me when we were having a listening with the record company, and he just looked at me and went, you know, like, <laughs> thank you, because he knew that, like, I didn't really plan on anything being a hit. I just wanted to, again, vent and, and be the authentic person. It was the most embarrassing moment of my life, that, that airplane. You know, I was on an airplane. I was I blacked out. I woke up. I was in a lot of trouble. Yeah. You know, uh, certain parts of my anatomy were hanging out. Um, <laughs> you know, it was it was a wild time. The '90s, and then everything got fucked up. And so I I was sober. After 9/11, I was like, okay, the party's definitely over. I've, I've got to get sober. Yeah, a lot of things nothing, changed then. <laughs> there's nothing that you can like be happy about right now, and then Bush and all that. So yeah, I got sober because of them. Well, that's good. Congratulations, you got to stay no, healthy. No, I got sober for myself. I'm yeah, just that's right. You got to stay healthy though, right? Absolutely. I think everybody should. Everybody should have their own uh, regime, and 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 but but sobriety has been insanely good for me, and I love it, and it's given me my brain back and my and my. Um, my creativity i wish some other folks would get sober um you know so uh you know i always have them in my heart but uh you can never control an addict they can only control you can't themselves. force them to do anything yeah. you know you can't control anybody so yeah it's tough but i mean you know you gotta look out for yourself stay healthy mm -hmm. you know you can't continue that lifestyle mm -hmm. on the road especially hell no so no i can't no others can some people can i can't yeah. I, am I singing? My range is so high, and I have to baby my voice so much that I just, it's, it's, it's so much easier just to live a, a clean life. You know, facing your fears without a beer for an alcoholic is pretty insanely tough the first time. And then after that, it gets a little bit better each time. So, you know. Awesome. Well, congratulations once again. Thank you very much. So, now, if this is one of my favorite questions to ask, mm -hmm. uh, if you had a time machine, and you could go visit any band at any point in their career, who would it be and when? I would go see 
the clash somewhere in 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 London maybe the well, yeah, you'd have to maybe the Astoria around 82 but <laughs> I saw the clash <laughs> without Mickey Jones without Mick is it Mick Jones yeah. no it's Mick Taylor I I can I can't remember I don't remember I mean, I know Joe Strummer, you know. I love the class, Joe but Strummer I can't, I can't name him With Mick Taylor, that would have been amazing. Yeah. But I saw Joe Strummer tour without him. He had two great guitar players. And uh, he is amazing, dude. He took his telly and threw it off all the way across the stage, and that's where I stole that from. Really? Yeah, I, I, used, to, I used to throw my telly 30 or 40 feet. And hope like somebody $6, catches it? dollars guitar. No, threw it to my guitar tech yeah. and went, shoop, like, and caught it. Every, every night did he did he ever like yep drop it yeah <laughs> sometimes i would throw it the wrong way you know i'm all lit and everything <laughs> wrong side of the and stage and it's like it's like <laughs> rrr, rrr, rrr. i'm like shit not end over end <laughs> you know but uh i would throw it neck first and it would kind of lob up and then body it would it would like change and go body neck so he'd grab the body and the neck of the, yeah. of the guitar and uh, just one time, physics. it just came like head first, you know, straight down. He's like, "Fuck!" But um, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That was where I got that from, Joe Strummer, and Joe Strummer's endless supply of just authenticity and amazingness. You can't find another guy like Joe Strummer now, not with the voice and the and the and the and the American Idol and the and the and the and the Beyonce and the. And the <laughs> Yeah, yeah that stuff is bad. Shit, man. What happened? Like, I woke up, I got sober, and I took a look around. I was like, who are all these fucking people in the top 10? Who are all these fucking, like, folks that showed up and they're like, I can't even pronounce his name. Keon, Kenny, 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 Kenny West. What's his name? Keon, Cal, 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 Kanye. Like the pepper. Oh, him. Yeah. Yeah, Kanye West. Who put this fucking asshole in charge of the top 40? Who is this know. fucking guy? I don't know. Who in the fuck let Bieber in the party? I don't know. When, 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 you know, when I was, when we were breaking, it was, it was fucking Nirvana, Nine Inch Nails. You know, I was in Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, you were. So, you know, <laughs> we were like, we were a part of like this new regime of like amazing talent. And then all of a sudden it's just drum machines and gospel singing and i nothing against it but come on yeah nice it's a little nails. over like how many pretty you know what chuck d said what chuck d he said when public enemy came out with uh with uh, a fear of a black nation the world was it, way safer the, we didn't have any wars you've had two war sorry if i keep spitting on that's who that's who i am <laughs> that's, okay. that's who i am we've had two wars we've had recession We've had all this stuff, and what are they talking about? Being happy. And their money. Yeah. That is so... That he goes, this this whole... Everybody's out there trying to have a hit, trying to sound nice and sweet. It's like, no one has any substance. The whole, the whole thing is shit. Chuck D is awesome, Chuck though. D. Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Flavor Flav. Flavor! Yeah, boy! <laughs> well... <laughs> Hey, man, thanks for sitting down with us at the Rave TV today. You got it. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate it. Anytime. You come back, we'll By have you By the way, again. I have not taken my ADHD medicine. I do apologize to those of you who think I'm crazy. I haven't taken it either, man. Okay, you need it? Nah. I'm ADHD. Uh, yeah, but I, I am, but Squirrel! I just don't take it. Ah! I'm just kidding. Plastic bag. Plastic bag. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Rave TV. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks.